And now for a look at Ukraine's rich Jewish heritage, then and now, brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter based in Toronto, Ontario. Little is known about the Crimean Genocide, Stalin's deportation and exile of Crimean Tatars in 1944 after two and a half years of Nazi occupation. Even less is known about the Jews who lived in Crimea and their fate during this time. In 2017, a Ukrainian film was released telling the story of a Crimean Tatar woman who saved the lives of 88 Jewish children, first from the Nazi Gestapo in 1941 during the Holocaust, and then again in 1944 from the Soviet NKVD during the Crimean deportations. The film's title is Chuja Moletva, which translates as A Prayer of Strangers. It was filmed in Russian, Georgian, and German, and later dubbed into Ukrainian. An English subtitled version was released in Toronto in 2018 with the title 87 Children. Adrian Zwicker is an Austrian actor who played the SS officer in the film. He joins me now by phone from his home in Berlin. Welcome, Adrian, and thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> Actually, I'm not in Berlin right now because I'm shooting a movie in southern Germany. Oh. And right now I'm in my hotel room. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yes, I, I remember now you told me that you're starting work on a new film. So thanks again for taking time here on Nash Holos to talk about your role in A Prayer of Strangers. So first of all, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in Austria, but uh, I've been living in Berlin for 18 years now. I'm from a small town in the southern part of uh, Austria. After the school, I went to the um, acting academy, state academy in Vienna, where I did a four-year education of uh, being an actor and basically started in theater acting, which is quite normal in Europe. You're getting all the basics, you know, from Shakespeare and so on, and you do all those training years. But film was already in my life when I was a teenager. I was really anxious to see all the new movies, and I went to the movies all the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in the times of VHS, you know, my, my father brought me home all those uh, night nice films, and mm -hmm. I had a really, really mm -hmm. big collection of all these cassettes. You know, and, and it started pretty, pretty early for me to be a, a love of mine, actually, to make movies. And um started pretty early with a big film, an Austrian film, and then it, it moved on and on. And I've been doing more and more films. But uh, that film was the, the first one, actually, I did in Ukraine. And we also shot in, in Georgia, mm -hmm. in uh, Tbilisi, in the, the capital. And that was really great. Because I've, I've, I wouldn't have gone there. I didn't know so much about that country. And the reason we shot there was because today it looked like the Crimean Peninsula right, right. at that time. Because right. not only that, you couldn't at that time, you know, today you couldn't even shoot there right. because of the Russian occupation. So there was no way we could go to, to the original places. You speak English very well. Did you learn to speak English then when you were going to school in uh, in Austria? Thank you. First of all, um, we learned it in school already. So in Austria or in Germany, um, you have to learn English kind of from the start. And as I said before, I was really watching a lot of movies and mm -hmm. I really watched them in the original language. And of course, the American and British movies were the mm -hmm. most viewed. And mm -hmm. um, I think also... Living in Berlin is a very um, multicultural um, place, and I have many friends who uh, talk English with, not even German. So uh, mm. I guess I have a lot of practice. Yeah. I guess I guess so. So how did you end up then getting this role in a Ukrainian film? Actually, my my agent called me. Mm. Um, she was getting a note from the production of the film, and somehow. Uh, I think it even started with Facebook because, you know, in, in Ukraine and in the whole um, eastern part of Europe, they use Facebook more as a business tool, which we don't in Germany, actually. Oh. And, and I think they found me hmm. via Facebook. And then um, they just called my agent and, and asked if I could play the part. And, and Aktem Saitablayev, the director, he really wanted to cast that part with a with an original, you know, German-speaking 
actor because all the other cast was actually Ukrainian mm. or Georgian background. Mm-hmm. And I think it was very important to him for this to be, you know, as authentic as possible. And I also had to, since I don't speak Russian or Ukrainian, I played my part in German. So, but that worked pretty well, though. Uh huh. So, how did you prepare yourself for such a role? And for an actor, it's really cool to, to play a villain. You know, if it's a Nazi or a murderer or whatever, it's uh, no, honestly, it's really it's the most fun to to go into this dark side and to to get into these kind of dark characters. And you know, it's much more interesting basically than to play the the nice guy. Huh. It's much more work involved and that's what I always loved about acting and you can play somebody who is very far away from myself you know so I'm a I'm a really a, a sunny guy I can say that. <laughs> you know I'm a, I'm a nice guy in real life <laughs> so um, that was a part was wasn't actually that far away from me because the guy Heinrich the part I'm playing, he was a very well-educated man. And, you know, he was interested in art and history. And uh, he spoke uh, several languages. And he was sometimes like a, a schoolboy, you know, on a trip to Ukraine. And he, he was interested in the artifacts, the German artifacts, which have been found on the Crimea Peninsula. So uh, it was, you know, not only that the SS had to swipe out those uh, villages and, and kill those Jewish people, but his personal quest was to find these artifacts and to reestablish the German culture, you know, this old antique culture there, and it was kind of crazy thought like Hitler was, you know, he yeah. was interested and it became an obsession for him to to, to go there and he, he fell in love with this kindergarten teacher with Seidel, the, the main character Oh, and if you see the film, you find this really a nice guy. But then on the other hand, they had a attack. You know, there was the SS was brutal and yeah. it was a genocide. You know, and, and and then you see you see this nice character falling in love, being nice, and then the next moment, the next scene, you see this guy shooting a little kid. You know, and that's um, that's what we also wanted to portray. You know, the how could somebody do that? And that was also crazy to get into that and yes it is hard it was hard it's not you know you have uh, sleepless nights preparing for that kind of part Mm -hmm. and it was frightening to really stage those scenes where for example i really had to you know grab that child and and shoot it and stuff and really i had i had to cry there and and on the other hand no matter how bad the character is you know you can also play richard third who was killing all those people or whatever, you know, if you, if you go there, it's the same thing every time. It's just acting. You know, in the end you say, well, this is the story we want to tell, you know, and I'm playing that character and it's maybe hard to go there, but in the end we have to deliver and you go in there the same way you would play any other character actually. Wow. And you, you use the same techniques to get into it. And, you know, being that person, he that didn't think, about himself as a bad character. So it's only for us to see, you know, these kind of brainwashed characters yeah. to be involved in, the, in this kind of uh, crazy war uh, crime. You yeah, know? So, yeah. But as I said before, as an actor, you, you want to go there, you know, you want to go yeah. deep. And uh, afterwards, you think kind of it was fun, you know, and it was um, but also a big honor to be involved in that movie and to tell that story. Yeah, it you know it's it's interesting when you're in the audience and you're watching a movie and you kind of you get drawn into the story, you tell the story very well. And so you forget about that that's not the actual character. And to hear you describe um, you having to portray somebody that you're not, for one thing, and to go into that that dark side. It, you know, we we know the history of war. Everybody knows it's awful. But if you're in a country where you've never grown up with it and you're trying to understand it, it, it seems like it is so easy. Like the the line between a decent human being and somebody that becomes a war criminal or any other kind of criminal seems like a very very fine line 
And I, I think it's good for people to realize that I could be that person, possibly. You know, so, yeah. right? Yeah, if you can get that message across, I think that's a very, very powerful thing to do. Yeah, I think that's that's what we wanted to tell, you know, that, and that is a very uh, compared to actual history. You know, if you uh, look at the uprising of the right-wing parties in Germany and Austria and, uh, you know, Poland and, and, and even France and stuff, then uh, you, you start to think differently about that because this is a very fine line and it never started with total extremes going on the streets and, and catching Jews or, you know, it's just it's this small little thing, this changing of language and that it's being allowed and people don't care, people don't do anything about it. That's also part of a crime already, you know, not standing up, mm-hmm. saying anything. All these things, they didn't start just overnight. You know, mm-hmm. It took some time mm-hmm. and, and some events to go there and that's why it's so dangerous again today you know and that's why also this film is very important for modern uh, society you know to to see all those those connections as you see to see what you said like this this fine line you know that's very important to tell that story yeah did you know about this the story of Sadie Arafova and the Jewish children she saved not before I I got the script Mm. no I was very hit by this tragic story and um, when I read it I was feeling really terrible that, that I even though I didn't know about that part of, of history. No, nobody you does. Know, for me as an Austrian or German we have that very much put into our education system so even as a small school kid you will learn about the Nazi crimes mm-hmm. you know this is very important and we learn about it again and again and again you know living in 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 germany or in austria you cannot avoid to learn about this so we know quite a lot even as young people about those crimes but on the other hand there were so many places and so many different stories where it took place and even with my knowledge i'm always surprised that i didn't know so many other details like for for example i was doing this other film in italy where i also played a nazi officer and it was about the italian resistance in mm-hmm. in, in northern italy but i didn't know about that so it's like you, but if you're not a historian you would not get into it so you know details and, and the story of 87 children was the same it was the first time where i started to read about the story of side and it was very emotional, and that was the first time I heard about it, really. And do you know anything about the Crimean deportation of 1944 before you took on this role? Not so well, also, you know, not so well. I was visiting concentration camps already as a teenager, and you hear that from all over the place. The whole war yeah. uh, was so devastating. Yeah. So basically, I wasn't really so much aware before I went there to shoot a movie about uh, Ukraine or about Crimea. So I learned a lot about that from being involved with the movie, you know, and from from my actor colleagues and from working with the director. Mm-hmm. So we went into this topic uh, quite deeply. And, uh, that's, you know, it was a very emotional time. And today, with the, the Russian occupation, all this history, you know, to meet with the Tatar people and, you know, to talk to them. And it was sometimes really heartbreaking. A lot of people in Ukraine are very warm and open-hearted and even more in Georgia. I was like having those wonderful moments and really made some some new friends. And these people, you know, still have that weight on their shoulders from the Soviet Union from that time, you know, from these occupation times. And also it goes back really to the war, to the Second World War. And, and they still kind of live that even more than we do maybe in, in Germany. And they still suffer from all that history. And for me as a person, but also as an actor, it was it was a great experience, actually. You know, and I still have a lot of friends there where I Skype with them and stuff, you know. Yeah. Nice, yeah. So you were filming in Georgia, and you were saying it's because the topography is, is similar to Crimea, yeah. where, where the story took place. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. 
amazing, really. I, I can only suggest you to go there if you have the chance to go there someday. Uh, I would really love beautiful. to. Yeah, I would love to go to Georgia. Yeah. I actually was in Crimea in two thousand and eight, and oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, I went with my mom and uh, a couple of sisters and a couple of nieces, and we uh, we went on. We were in Yalta. Yeah, we flew into Simferopol, right. took a bus, went through Bakhchisarai, actually stopped and saw the Muslim palace there. Yeah, the Crimean Tatar Palace, and we had a meal in a restaurant and did a little bit of touring around Bakhchisarai. But it sounds like it was an incredible experience for you to be acting in this role. Did it change your life? Yeah, yeah, of course. It, it, you know, I found a lot of respect for those people and um, like I said I met some really really um, open hearted people and, and you've been invited to private homes where they were cooking mm-hmm. their food and, and you know you, where you couldn't even leave and you had to stay there the whole night <laughs> drinking their vodka and, and you know, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. You know, that's very special there and, and it's very meaningful and maybe you know that if you if you have a meal yeah. with a party and you yeah. Now we now we all together here and and <laughs> so special and we welcome our our German friends to be with us and this is our brother now and it's like you know <laughs> this, <laughs> this kind of thing was really 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 nice and yeah it, it changed my perspective I didn't know a lot about Ukraine basically if you ask people in Europe in Germany about Ukraine they don't know a lot about it right. actually you know it's it's just the news and news channels owned by big companies so mm-hmm. you, know, you, you don't see the whole picture so, right. but going there you see what is really going on there and, and I traveled there again to visit uh, I have a good friend now he's from, from Kiev and um, he's uh, become one of my best buddies actually he's a German Ukrainian actor uh, Sebastian Anton he also played in the movie yeah, as my uh, second officer and he's really become my, one of my best buddies in, in Berlin. <laughs> oh, nice. And, um, yeah, so I had the chance to go back there, you know, and even talking with people, I always tell them how beautiful uh, it is to go to Ukraine. And, of course, it changed my perspective of, of history again, you know, to go deeper into these topics, to see the truth behind basic history we learn and yeah. you know, and. and, and it kind of made me also a better person, you know, to, only to be able to, to play in such a movie because maybe if I didn't get the part, I don't know if I would have gone there really, you know. There's a lot of beautiful places in the world. And mm-hmm. I don't know if, if I would have picked that at that particular time. Yeah. Uh, but basically, you know, any part as an actor you play, if, even if it's just a doctor or a police officer or, you know, a villain... Whatever you play, if if you do it right, if it's a great script, if you have the chance to work with great co-actors and great directors, you can go deeper in that subject. You need to learn more about that and you learn more about yourself. And it can sometimes even feel like a therapy coming out of that kind of a movie. You feel like a different person. It also depends on how serious you take your job. But um, my part, I was always kind of doing the method acting going deeper into these characters and then mm-hmm. becoming them in some sort. And, you know, and that way you have that, that beautiful or terrible experiences and trips and you found yourself on some weird places, you know, on the top of a mountain in Georgia or in that Nazi uniform with other troops swiping uh, around a, a city which looked like uh, 1942. And, that's what I always loved in my career, you know, to be somewhere, to be somebody else. It's like an experience you wouldn't, wouldn't, you would never have in your life if it wasn't for that. Yeah. I really cherish that. I love that. Oh, well, you know, it's so uh, wonderful to hear your behind the scenes, you know, how an actor feels about the role they play. And uh, it's given me a new perspective, and I hope our listeners as well, uh, when, you know, we look, we watch movies now to go deeper, as you have to go deeper in your job. And I think it's maybe our job, quote unquote, as, 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 you know, decent human beings to think about that, to reflect on that. And um, you know, good actors like yourself certainly help us to do that. So thank you for doing the work, for being 
being so good at it. And thank you for taking the time to uh, to share your thoughts and your experience with us here on the show today. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. It was a great pleasure. Actually, uh, there's one more thing I'd like to say. That they were they were inviting me to Warsaw. Uh, next week there will there will be a Jewish film festival oh. where they invited the film Eighty Seven Children oh. and uh, the director Akdam he uh, at the moment he's shooting on another uh, film uh-huh. and he asked me if I could go there instead of him and I already told him that I, that I would but then this other movie you know came in where I'm right now so I had you know I couldn't go there uh, it was a pity uh, because I would love to have presented the film there but well you know work comes first so yeah, um, always yeah. I, yeah what are you what are you, <laughs> what are you working on now it's a film called Thinking Ship it's actually um, a portrait of a small family going to the summer vacation and it's about violence and losing control and uh, it's a very psychological family drama where I've been taking the lead role and oh. uh, it's also very very interesting like I said it's uh, good to to dive into this part of your soul which you n- never explored and um, you can go in there and be bad or be damaged but then you go back to your hotel room or you go back home and, and I'm Adrian again and <laughs> I'm a happy person and I get out of it again it's always good to be in there but also good to, to come back yeah. <laughs> amazing yeah. amazing so thank you again adrian i really appreciate your time good luck on on your new movie and all the best in the future thank you so much i really appreciate that and thanks for the invite okay my pleasure thanks adrian I was speaking with Adrian Zwicker, the Austrian actor who played the role of the SS officer in the film Chuja Moletva, A Prayer of Strangers. The English subtitled version of the film is called 87 Children. It is the story of a Crimean Tatar woman who saved Jewish children from two genocides during World War II, Hitler's Holocaust and Stalin's deportation of Crimean Tatars. Her story aired in the previous episode of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage. You can find the transcript and audio file at the Nasholus website. For more information or a copy of the film, contact East West Film Distribution in Vienna, Austria. This is Pavlina, producer and host of Nasholus Ukrainian Roots Radio. Thank you for listening. Until next time, Shalom. Ukrainian Jewish Heritage is brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. To find out more about their work, visit their website and follow them on Facebook and Twitter. Transcripts and audio files of this and earlier broadcasts of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage are available at their website, ukrainianjewishencounter.org, as well as at the Nasholos website, www.nasholos.com. (laughs) 